Hi guys, uh, thank you for, for listening in today. So my talk today is uh, highlighting that we see a shift in consumer expectations and behaviors calling for a new type of experience from packaging. So for packaging, this means designing for values and behaviors that are shifting towards experience, convenience and meaning, sustainability and delight. What we at the Absolute Company uh, call packaging with purpose. So this means that luxury brands must become obsessively consumer centric, putting the consumer concerns at the center of the business like never before to stay relevant. So we as luxury brands also need to make a sustainability a key pillar in everything we do. So this is not only about growing consumer demand. Uh, going green now could serve as a hedge against rising commodity prices and the stricter environmental regulations that are expected in some parts of the world. So to remain relevant to the next generations of consumers, we must do more in of sharing our brand purpose and values and demonstrating our heritage and authenticity. So as people around the world begin to heal from the emotional toll of the pandemic, we expect an accelerated shift in values and behaviors around experience, convenience and meaning and sustainability and delight. So we can have the next slide. So now in September reporting, we can see that in China, uh, luxury offline activations return to pre-COVID levels for the first time. With investments in pop-ups and omni-channel experiences to entice consumers back into stores. So here we see an example of Dior that launched a pop-up retail campaign integrating a WeChat mini program to promote social commerce, including consumer incentives and promotions from celebrity. So here we can see that packaging has the opportunity to play and interact more directly with customers and consumers. So modern connected packaging will give consumers information such as where the product was made, where the components or ingredients that made it came from, and where the package may be taken to be recycled. On top of that, it is itself a doorway into the world that is an experience, a game, an app, or a quiz. So next slide, please. We also see that in mainstream media, the conversation has moved from talking about climate change to talking about the climate crisis. New legislation, increased media coverage, and political movements are ensuring that sustainability and climate action is far from a trend. And also the general awareness, understanding and priority has shifted with people in general and with the millennials and the Gen Z in particular to become a strong decision point when choosing between brands and products. So next slide, please. So millennials who currently represent around 32% of the luxury market are driving this change. And by 2025, they will make up 50%. And here we see their understanding of the UN's sustainable development goals and how close they are to uh, this. Um, also, Gen Z are on track to represent 8% of the luxury market already by the end of 2020. And both these groups' expectations from luxury brands are very different from previous generations. So next slide, please. This must be viewed as a positive. So it's an opportunity and a potential for the business. So here quoting Francis Corner, one of the judges of Positive Luxury Awards says, the luxury industry has all the credentials to take a lead on the sustainability conversation. 
a focus on handcrafted products made slowly and with high quality materials means luxury products can last a lifetime, reducing waste and protecting our environment. Next slide, please. So with a heightened awareness around climate issues, consumers are no longer willing to accept unsustainable practices and will actively disassociate from brands that don't share their values. Luxury consumers want to be seen as ethical, creative, connected, philanthropic and consensual. And brands that can speak to this new mindset and live those values will have huge opportunities to connect and deliver meaningful experiences. And packaging plays an active and imperative role in this. Next slide, please. So for packaging, this means designing for values and behaviors that are shifting towards experiences, convenience and meaning, sustainability and delight. And we as an industry can only make a positive difference in the world if we create consumer delight through products, services and experiences. Then we have a platform that gives us a voice to contribute in a positive way to people and planet. So with this approach to packaging and by transforming the way we work, changing how we design and make our packaging, we can become future proof. Next, please. So we see four key shifts that will shape the future of packaging. To be future proof, we must move the way we think about packaging design to follow from mass production to hyper personalization, from computing power in computers to computing power in all products, from carbon neutral to climate positive, and from going to the store to the store coming to me. Next slide, please. So packaging is part of this more than just protecting the product. It's about enhancing the experience of the product. And one of the classic examples of the power of packaging comes from studies on wine. So it has been shown that people tend to prefer wine from cork stopped rather than screw top bottles even if they can tell no difference under blind tasting conditions. And similarly, even though the bagging box represents a more sustainable form of packaging, people experience wine sold this way as tasting different, inferior in fact, than the same wine served in a cork stopped bottle. There's even a correlation between the weight of a wine bottle and how much you pay. This is of course known that adding weight to packaging indicates quality. But in research carried out by Charles Spence, professor in experimental psychology at Oxford University, it was found that adding a small weight to everything from a small box of chocolate to cans of fizzy drinks results in people rating the contents as being of higher quality and in the case of edible products, more satiating. It even affects our perception of scent and the research showed 15% increase in perceived fragrance intensity when, for example, hand washing solutions was presented in a heavier container. So this is a particularly interesting challenge for designers given that recent moves towards lightweighting and even eliminating product packaging wherever possible. As such, a number of researchers are currently trying to figure out whether they can use other cues, such as color, to give the psychological weight to their product packaging. Many studies conducted over the years have demonstrated that white or yellow objects tend to feel lighter in the hand than black or red ones of equivalent weight. And we also have another example here, which is how Apple creates packaging to be an extension of the tech within, smooth, simple and intuitive. 
And we know that opening an Apple box is a truly sensory experience. Uh, it's slow and seamless, and yes, it has a devoted fan base. So in conclusion, it seems that taking a holistic and multi-sensory approach to the design of the packaging is a way forward in designing our future sustainable luxury packaging successfully. So let's go to the next slide. Let's have a look at a few examples already out there showing us how packaging already today is part of telling the brand's story. And those who address these challenges and opportunities without delay will be in a better position to navigate the new reality. So here we see Burberry. Uh, they recently launched brand new packaging to align with its movement towards eliminating unnecessary plastic packaging. Using a modern manufacturing technique, Burberry created paper packaging using FSC certified paper from recycled coffee cups. The resulting product has a high quality, expensive feel, and it continues to resonate with the brand's heritage. Next slide, please. Here, another example from uh, Yves Saint Laurent. And as part of their commitment to sustainability, they have unveiled a refreshed or rouge range. This makes it easier for consumers to make the most of the original packaging that they have already purchased. So the refillable and recyclable packaging design takes the form of a pod-like insert that can be added to the original cream packaging. So the refill pod has a textured cap and a brushed gold finish that is just as luxurious as the original packaging. So let's move to the next slide. Here, another example from Ra. It's a uh, concrete pendant lamp, which is made entirely from demolished and recycled industrial waste. And the inner tray is made from compostable bamboo and the outer packaging is recycled paper with a DeVos logo and glossy black finish. And I also want to share a, a last and fourth example on the next slide, please. This one from Stella McCartney. So they recently turned to a bio-based and fully compostable and sustainable packaging manufacturer. TIPA that offers the same properties as conventional plastic packaging, but with an end of life that enables the packaging to safely biodegrade in compost in the same way as organic waste does. By working with this breakthrough company, Stella McCartney continues to turn this pledge of sustainability into solutions. So next slide, please. So to conclude, um, modern luxury comes with a purposeful narrative enhanced by its packaging. And as the luxury consumer's mindset evolves, authenticity and genuine commitment to the future of the planet and humanity are essential to secure a place in the hearts of modern luxury consumers. So with immersive retail concepts, strategic collaborations, seamless digital experiences, human-centric storytelling and honest brand values are all key to connect with the luxury buyers of today and tomorrow. And the future of packaging is to actively tell and enhance this narrative through creating experiences, provide convenience and meaning, and sustainability and delight. So let's move to the last slide. And with that, um, 
thank you guys for for listening and uh, i think with that we now have time for questions nicholas thank you so much for for sharing those thoughts sharing those um insights into into some of the some of the way that ah Can you hear me now? Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. This is live TV. Sometimes we have technical hitches, but hopefully you can you can hear me now. Um, Nicholas, thank you so much for sharing your your thoughts oh, and insights you. and in uh, into in in what is happening in in this interesting, fascinating world of of luxury packaging. Um, can I ask you? You you. you we hear ideas around authenticity a lot. Um, I really want to ask, what is authenticity? How how would you define that, and what what, what does it mean when you would, when 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 applied to packaging design and packaging development? So for uh, for us. Uh... At the Absolute Company, it's very much about the concept of one source, meaning that everything uh, that goes into the production of Absolute Vodka, I use this as uh, an example, is coming from the very near proximity of where we have our production facility meaning that everything from the components that make up our product in terms of uh, winter wheat and uh, well water, also the, the glass itself is uh, sourced within this very near proximity, which then by that uh, also reflects the uh, local landscape and the very origins from the brand. So it's a way of really showing that we are true to where we are coming from and utilizing what is close to us uh, uh, where we produce. Okay. okay. And, and I suppose one of the interesting possibilities in when, when you were talking about the world of luxury packaging is is the ability to experiment with with materials um that you, that you would not perhaps in in the world of F, fmcg that you wouldn't mm. be looking at um and i just wonder if if there are i mean i i'm, I'm thinking about you know you Ab absolute has has had leather jackets and all sorts of fun things on limited limited editions in the past but are but thinking about a sustainability perspective or an authenticity perspective, mm. are there any materials that, that you see as exciting and new and or, or coming coming through in into into your packaging? Yes, for sure. And and uh, I think reflected through the examples that I had in the presentation. It's you know a couple of themes that is uh, running through this. So you could either look at solutions that are reusable, um, meaning that you can afford more expensive materials, knowing that it will have a longer lifetime and be used over and over again. The other approach is making sure recyclability. So this also opens up for, for new materials, but really focuses on what is established already today as uh, recycling streams. Are these materials that we actually can take care of and regenerate uh, post-consumer use? And the other two themes would be around you know, compostable and biodegradable, um, which is, is uh, a kind of solution that is asking also from the material chosen that it has to be um, unstable. Uh, if it's not unstable, it won't biodegrade or it won't be suitable for a compost. 
But then on the other hand, it is not then a material that is suitable for recyclability. So it's those are kind of the the big themes that help you make uh, choices around that. Yeah, and and I suppose in luxury, in in much of luxury packaging, you are talking not about objects that that are simply a delivery mechanism for a product. You're talking about an object that that you want to be beautiful and lasting and that you'll keep in your home for a period of time for months or or, or years even in some cases. exactly so reusable then, is, yeah. uh, is really an interesting uh, theme for luxury packaging and also as we saw from uh Yves Saint Laurent, for example making it possible to refill it in a convenient way yeah. Do you see refills being uh, a, a theme or a question in the spirits industry? Well, we see opportunities with organizations such as Loop TerraCycle, but also we see initiatives from, from retailers setting up uh, refilling stations uh, also for, uh, for wine and beer and so on. Um, and I know from working for Havana Club previously, also the, the, there is an opportunity to set up uh, possibilities to, to refill uh, very expensive uh, packaging uh, for, you know, in this case, a luxury rum that when you purchase it, it comes in a beautiful carafe. Uh, and it also comes with a certificate. And by presenting both the carafe and the certificate to a, a reseller, you can have it refilled uh, with the rum. And by that, extending the life of the, uh, of the carafe itself. Um, so this has been in place for uh, Havana Club's uh, flagship rum, uh, Maximo. Interesting. Interesting. Um, and you, you talked about clearly recyclability is, is a question of local recycling streams and, and moving as much as possible towards mono materials. But you also talked about um, compostable and biodegradable materials. And I know that Absolute has been in the news in recent days and recent weeks with trials of a paper bottle. I wonder if, if you could tell us anything about that. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, more than happy to. Um, so right. that is an initiative that we very recently had our first production of, uh, of the paper bottle. So this is addressing exactly as you point out here. You know, we have, we have ideas and solutions for, for reuse and for recyclability, but the paper bottle is new to addressing uh, compostable and uh, biodegradable. And, um, and, and, and thinking about, thinking about your, where you started really, when you were talking about the, the cues and how you create a perception of quality, do, could, is there anything you can share about your thinking regarding, you know, how, how do you create this perception or the, or the sense of a very high quality product, which of course Absolute is, alongside uh, mm -hmm. a, a more um, disposable paper material that, that, that you're moving towards or that you're, that you're trialing. Yeah. So I, I think here, you know, as I, as I talked about as well, we, we do see a shift in mindset with the younger generations, the millennials and the, and the Gen Z, what actually is um, important and what is uh, the basis for, for making choices. And one of those uh, kind of key factors in making choice is to see that the brand you uh, choose have sustainable practices uh, implemented and in place. So in, in such way, you know, this kind of initiative, even though the material itself might be 
you know, a very expensive or exclusive material. The initiative and the ambition with the initiative uh, is to come up with more sustainable packaging solutions. And that is something that, that resonates and is very important when making choices. Then I think there is another aspect to it as well, and that is kind of the, the level of detail and uh, the other things that I talked about. How does it feel in your hand? How does it smell? Uh, how, how is it to, to handle the packaging? So paper is a very warm and alive material. Uh, you, can, you can feel the, the texture, you can feel embossings, you can work with the material in many different ways. And you can present the packaging with a very high level of, of detail uh, and uh, texture. So the, the touch and the handling of the packaging is, uh, is also a very important aspect in this. Okay, okay. Um, do you do you see a day, and without wishing to put you on the spot, do you see a day when paper absolute bottles might be the majority or a, 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 a very significant part of your production? I do think, and what we are looking for is uh, to be able to, to provide a broader range of packaging solutions in the future versus today. And having a range of packaging solutions that are more specific to different occasions and, and different customers. I mean, there could be, you know, cases where you want to refill your 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 beautiful and uh, and highly loved uh, limited edition bottle, and the packaging of the of the vodka that you're refilling with is less of importance. So you might want to buy it in a pouch or something that is you know a a, a very uh, simple type of packaging to be used as a as a refill. But also in, in other cases, it, it could be the other way around, that it's, uh, it's about a celebration or uh, you're looking for a gift for, for a friend and you want the packaging to, uh, to be of, of, uh, of high quality and look uh, luxurious and, and feel you know, like, like it's really representing uh, the, the gratitude that you feel towards the person that you are giving the gift to. So there is not one packaging that is kind of uh, the best solution. It's a multitude of types of packaging to be able to provide what is best for specific uh, occasions. Great. And one, one of the things that everybody loves about the brand that you work on about Absolute are those limited editions. Um, yes. And no, I have a few. I have a few at home with, with unique digital printing or with different colours running through the glass. I mentioned earlier um, the leather jackets, and that's going back. You know, all of these are going back a, a few years. Do limited editions? Will limited editions still play that central role in in Absolute's approach in the years to come? Yeah, I mean, limit, as you say, limited editions are, are kind of a, a, a signature thing for, for Absolute and, and that will continue to be of importance. Uh, I, I do think that we will see, you know, the, the variation of the limited editions to continue to, to range, uh, you know, in a, in a broad difference of, of themes. Uh, and, uh, you know, as always, it's, uh, it's exciting to see what is coming up uh, at the end of, uh, of every year in terms of uh, limited editions. Absolutely. Well, we, we are very much looking forward to seeing what's, what comes out at the end of 2020. Um, Nicholas Applequist, we have to leave it there. We've run out of time, but thank you so much for, for taking the time, for sharing your, your thoughts and expertise with us. And I very much look forward to, uh, to hearing more and staying in touch in the future. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Josh. It was a pleasure. Pleasure.